What is up, you guys? Welcome back to another episode of Flight Time Friday. Um, apologies for the lack of videos this last week and the week before. It's been kind of a kind of a rough week. Had some stuff going down. Um, actually, dropped my camera um, walking into a Starbucks to edit video. Fell out of my backpack because I didn't have it zipped like an idiot. And it fell out onto the concrete, shattered the lens, like at least just the front element, the front uh, piece of glass, and then um, broke the camera body as well. So those are physically not broken, but something has broken inside the camera. So um, neither of those two are working, um, which is a serious bummer and an expensive mistake on my part. Probably going to be $1,500 to $2,000 to get both of those fixed. So um, that is a bummer. Uh, but... You, you gotta learn from your mistakes, and that was definitely a mistake that I do not want to make again, that is for sure. But, um, yeah, so, regardless of that, though, we are doing an episode of Fly Time Friday. Um, fortunately, I have really good friends, and uh, the Hush Outdoor guys were super studly and allowed me to borrow their Canon 80D um, and a couple of lenses, which is actually really good because one of the lenses let me borrow is a nice long 210 millimeter lens or 250 something like that so I can actually get up and close because the, re the big reason I haven't done any really nymph tying videos is because my camera just really didn't focus far enough I, my lens was not long enough to get a good uh, clean shot of the nymphs that I wanted to tie if they're a little bit smaller so huge shout out to those guys uh, they've been awesome friends from the start and I just really appreciate them helping me out here because now I can continue to make content for you guys and for myself and still get to enjoy this um, while my other stuff is getting fixed so today we're just gonna be tying um, three super super simple European nymphs that realistically have not left my box a single time unless I lost all of them from a day of fishing um, uh, one of them is just a, like a tungsten surveyor, uh, one of Lance Egan's patterns, um, and then we have just a simple caddis pattern. I'm sure there's a name for it. It's literally ice dub, wire body, and then a dark black uh, antron dub uh, for the collar because those caddis will kind of segment from like a very distinct green or cream color into like a very small, their head is black. So it'll be tied through that. Um, and then we'll have a little hot spot on that fly as well. And then um, a super simple mayfly pattern. I'm sure there's a name for this thing. Um, there's a name for every single small variation of any fly that's ever been tied. Nothing is original anymore. And I honestly don't even want to attempt to give it a name because I'm sure there will be people that will, will tell me what the actual name is. And it, maybe it has, just because I use ice dub for the thorax, it has a <laughs> different name um, than a different fly. So I'm just going to tie through the steps here. You guys are going to see it. Um, so you'll know how to tie it, right, whether or not we know what the name of it is, um, we'll be able to tie it through this. So, excited to get through these, um, and let's get started real quick. Alright, so, for each of these flies that we're going to tie, um, sorry, we're going to be tying three, I don't think that's pretty zoomed in, we're going to be tying three, there you go, <laughs> three different patterns, um, one of which has an absolute name, and the other two, in my opinion, are so basic that they really don't, like, there's like 10 different flies with the same name, or 10 of the same flies with different names. So, the first one that we're going to tie is called the Tungsten Surveyor. This is one of Lance Egan's patterns, a really, really tasty uh, sow bug pattern. Um, this one is going to be tied in size 16. We're going to be using... Just kind of like an olive. Uh, this is uni, uni six sot thread. Um, doesn't really matter what you have underneath unless you are really going for like a certain color, like a tone. Um, I like these to be a little bit darker because naturally they're pretty gray. Um, so I like to have a little darker underbody to kind of like um, be, when, when this dub becomes translucent in the water, which this is just a rainbow sow bug dubbing. Um, when that becomes translucent in the water, um, I want a darker body, a darker underbody, so that way as it uh, becomes more translucent, you're going to be able to see that through the body. And if you ever look at a sow bug, they have a very distinctive line down their back. So, um, fly is super simple. We're just going to start off um, with adding some, you can do one fifteenth thousandth, or I like to tie these with one twenty thousandth, one twentieth, one twenty thousandth. I think that's what it is. One twenty thousandth, um, that was upside down, wasn't it? Yeah, there you go. 
twenty thousandth. There it is, um, with some of lead wire, and basically, as far as I understand, most of the time you want these flies so heavy, like as heavy as you can make them in the size that they are, right? So we have a three millimeter tungsten bead with a uh, it's a slotted bead, so it's going to sit on the hook a little bit better. And I'm gonna add like probably seven or eight wraps of this, whoop, of this onto the hook. Just kind of like that right there. And then I'm gonna push it up underneath the bead and when I, if I helicopter it, it'll break usually right where that point of contact is. Same thing back here, I'm just gonna pinch that off. I'm gonna roll it down. Okay. Okay, so this first bug, like I said, it's just gonna have a, there's no tail, there's no nothing on it. It's just gonna have our thread and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tie this in on the back end of that of this wire or of our uh, lead wire and I'm gonna slowly tie this down not in too much pressure because if you add too much right away it'll separate it and you don't want that to happen so basically I'm just gonna go ahead and shake it a lot more than I'd like it to okay I'm gonna go ahead and tie that in and that way we have a nice tight base that's not gonna spin on us a lot of the time, what I will do personally is I add super glue on the very first steps to make it so this entire fly is just basically sealed into a giant mass at the base, so it's not going to spin on me, it's not going to come unraveled, um, and that's just way, that way I can just kind of cover my bases. Okay, so my experience, I've caught way more fish on this fly using a red wire. Um, I know Lance, I think he uses a white or a, a gold wire with his but that's just not the way I like to tie mine. And that's the beauty of fly tying, is there's really no right way or wrong way to do anything. Until you don't catch fish on it, then that's definitely the wrong way. But I'm gonna take this wire, I'm gonna tie this in. And what I do when I tie this in, uh, especially when I've built this big of a body with my uh, lead wraps, I will just tie this in right at the end of those wraps. That way I can start kind of building a little bit of bulk to make this a little more uniform. These sow bugs start chubby and they end chubby so there's really no taper needed I just need it to be a little bit chunky in the back end here just like that so now I have a little bit of a taper but nothing too crazy and I'm gonna take my rainbow sow bug dubbing which is kind of just the universal dub for sow bugs <clears throat> and I'm very thinly going to start applying this in a noodle only really a couple strands at a time because I want this to be a nice tight wrap that's not going to come unraveled when I catch some fish on it because these these flies really do catch, especially here in Utah, these flies catch so many fish in Utah, it's not even funny. Realistically, this is what I catch 90% of my fish on when I fish like the Provo or the Weaver or something like that. So I'm going to take this and again, I'm going to just apply very thin amounts of this dub. And you guys can't really see it yet, but uh, you'll see when I'm wrapping how thin this is. Just a very, very tight, small dubbing noodle. Okay, perfect. Got all the dub on that I want. I'm gonna slowly wrap this up, and as I wrap, I personally like to add a good bit of tension because each of these thread wraps are gonna basically just tight down all of that dub. So that way I know that there's still, even though I'm applying some good tension, there's still um, a good bit for that dubbing to grab onto where, is, where it's tied in on the hook shank. And you can see that like, that's not a lot of dub and it built, builds a really good body. And then right up here at the head, I'm gonna make it a little bit thicker and then I'm gonna come up. And now I have all the way, I have the entire body done. The thorax on this is gonna be a hot spot. I'm gonna take my uh, red wire, which this is just a medium red wire. And I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna counter wrap it in the opposite direction that I just wrapped my dub all the way up the body just like that okay and that's just gonna again strengthen this fly so that it's not gonna be coming undone and I don't have to worry about it at all I can catch a couple fish on it and not be super uh, needing to switch switch flies or anything like that we're gonna helicopter off that wire so now it's super simple uh, you could finish this fly with just this dub um, and be good to go I personally like to add a nice little orange hot spot on this fly, and this is just an orange ice dub. Um, so basically all we're gonna do is gonna add, a, a, again, very thin amount 
of this dub to the to the thread very tightly spun on and I'm just gonna slide it up because I don't want a ton of extra thread wraps on this I don't want to build too much bulk at the head and I'm gonna take this I'm just gonna wrap this up nice and tight right at the head Ooh. every time it's not a fly tying Friday if my thread doesn't break mid fly okay so what I'm gonna do to salvage this so I'm gonna take this again and I'm gonna wrap it tightly with my fingers now and then I'm going to grab both of these, I'm going to grab my thread, and then we're going to basically close the loop as if you were tying a dubbing loop, just like that. Now that's back tied in and I'm not worried about it, take my scissors, cut both of those little tags, I'm going to add a couple more wraps just to make sure I'm good and secure, and then I'm going to whip finish with my hand. You can use a tool if you like. I just lose tools very quickly. So I opt for the finger finish. Okay, a couple of those. Break that off. And that right there is the finish fly um, for an added little bit of durability. I never trust my whip finishes. Uh, so as for an added bit of durability, I'm just gonna put a dab of this super glue right on the thread wraps at the head. And basically that'll just mesh all the way through and um, basically turn this into a giant solid piece of materials and it's not gonna be unraveling very much. So that, excuse me, so that right there is our finished cell bug. Super simple fly. I mean, you can see how many of those you could tie in, in an hour. You could easily tie a dozen, 15, 20 of them if you're pretty quick at it. Okay, so that's our super simple sow pattern. Now we're gonna go to a, um, again, very simple caddis pattern. One thing that I've learned very quickly when, since getting into this European nymphing stuff is how easy and quick these flies are to tie and how suggestive they are. They are su super suggestive patterns that catch fish everywhere because they can be a number of different things. This caddis is pretty much just straight up a caddis though, so not too, uh, can't catch too many fish on it if you know what I mean. But, so we're gonna take Again, um, for, just for this size of fly, I, I typically always try and stick to that one twentieth thousandth or twenty thousandth size um, lead wire, and I set that. Oh, there it is. So I'm going to take this lead wire again, and I'm going to do the same amount of wraps. Um, these caddis do have a little more of a taper, so we will need to build it up a little bit. But again, I'm going to do about six wraps with that lead wire there. Push it up underneath the bead, pinch it off, and then push it down so that it makes a good finished wrap. I'm gonna break that piece off just by helicoptering it. And again, so there's the base for our fly. Again, exactly the same um, as that tungsten surveyor. So I'm gonna wrap in. Essentially, I just add my wraps behind this to lock it in place. And then what I'll do is I'll make some nice loose wraps going up this to kind of cover it up. And then what I'll do after that is I'll take some tight wraps and make sure that I'm nice and tightly tied in. Okay, so as you can see, we're already starting to build a little bit of a taper here, which I like. So I'm gonna do that. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some wire. Again, you can kind of do whatever color wires you want. I try and stick to kind of like a medium copper or some, or like a small copper for this pattern because that's just what I like to do. But again, you can kind of do whatever you want. And since we're not naming this fly as a specific pattern, I don't have to tie it in a specific way. Okay, so we're gonna tie in our wire. This is just a copper wire that I have here. I kinda like that green and copper contrast, personally. Okay, so we're gonna tie that in nice and tight. Try and add some wraps to make sure that that is very solidly tied in because there's nothing worse than adding all your dub and then starting to wrap and pulling out your wire. So this is just gonna get a green hair's ear, I don't know if you can see that, there you go, yeah. Green hair's ear, uh, or a peacock hair's ear uh, dub. Uh, the thing I really like about this dub is you can tie it in so thin, because these fibers are so small, and kind of just, they're not very large uh, pieces of hair, as a lot of you guys know. So what we can do is we're gonna do the same thing. Very tight, thin dubbing noodle. Because we can build up whatever, however we want the body with this thinner noodle, and we're not going to get those giant, loose, errant 
fibers that look kind of goofy that kind of start to unravel and get all gross on us when we're actually fishing this fly. So again, it's going to be pretty simple. We're going to add our dummy noodle. Okay, and I like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some wraps all the way to the back where my wire is at. And I'm going to start wrapping right up the fly, just like this. And as you see, we've built a nice taper so that that transition isn't too brutal. And that was the perfect amount of dubbing. So now we're right all the way up to the head. And then again, we're going to take our wire and we're going to counter wrap this to make sure that we have as much structural integrity in our fly as possible. We're not going to be losing, or we're not going to be having flies fall apart on us, which in my opinion is worse than losing flies. Okay, I'm going to pop that off. And now, since this has such a dark tungsten bead, I'm going to use that as the actual head of the fly. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add another little hot spot of this orange right behind that. And, you know, I don't really know why it works, but there is a noticeable difference in fish caught with flies that do and don't have some of this dubbing right at the collar. Okay, so there's that. And that's our finished product right there. Again, it's basically the exact same fly as the Tuxen Surveyor, but it just has, um, there you go. It just has all of dubbing instead. Okay, so there's that one. Another, that's a killer pattern that I always fish. And then this last one is a tad bit smaller. This is actually a size, it's the same size hook, but this is an actually accurately sized hook. This is size 16 um, Allen jig hook, one of their nymph hooks. And then I have a size 2.5 millimeter tungsten bead on that, slotted as well. So you see that sits really nicely on that hook. We're trying to get into some smaller sizes, so bear with me. Hopefully we can still see this. Um, and this fly is a extremely simple fly. The only other step um, that we're going to be doing is we're adding a tail to it. Actually, we need to add our wire. For these smaller sizes in size 16, I'm going to use 1 15th thousandth uh, lead wire just because we don't want it to be too bulky. This fly actually does need to have a mayfly taper because this is what this is. It's a small mayfly pattern. You can tie it as a blue wing. You can tie it as a PMD. I'm going to tie this one as a blue wing because I fish a lot of small blue wing nymphs on the rivers that I fish. So again, we're going to add the same amount of wraps, about six or seven. Okay. I'm going to push that underneath the bead, break it off. And we've been using this olive, same olive thread this entire time which actually ends up working pretty well because this fly is going to have olive on it. So we're going to tie in and stick that right up there. And again, we're tying that thread in to lock our wire or our lead wire in place. We're going to add a couple wraps to that. Fortunately, this wire is when we go to it down a size is not nearly as much of a bear to build a proper taper of. So I'm just going to wrap back, do a couple wraps to make sure that my taper is looking good. And I like that. I need to loosen some of those. And I like that. Um, this fly uh, is just going to have a peacock tail. And this is going to be the mad hunt for my peacock. Or not my peacock. What am I saying? A pheasant tail. Sheesh. Oops. Okay. Pretty simple. Pheasant tail fiber. Um, we're just going to use this for the tail. You only really need, especially for these smaller flies, you really only need like five to six little fibers and honestly probably not even that much but we're gonna use five or six because that's what I have pinched in my fingers right now okay your scissors and cut that off and I'm not gonna be the guy that tells you you need to go buy a whiting cape of Coq de Leon which is just a fiber that apparently is a little stronger than pheasant tail. In my opinion, I don't even think these tails really freaking matter. Um, pull that. That's no, too short. Oops. Okay. So again, we're going to retry that. 
I, in my opinion, this pheasant tail is fine. If you lose a couple fibers, you lose a couple fibers on some fish. But um, we're gonna tie this in, and then basically we're going to pull this to length. We want it to be about. I always try and go about a quarter of the length of the fly itself. So right about there I'm happy with. And I'm going to take some tight wraps now and tie this in just like that. And then you can just break pheasant tail right off. Let me just double check that. Yep, that looks good to me. So now I'm going to take my wire and this I, I tie with a small or even an extra small um, gold wire. Take this. Snip a little bit of that off. Tie this in right at the taper again so I can kind of still continue to build a decent taper with materials while I tie the fly. Be sure to not wrap too far back because then you'll force some of those tail fibers down. Okay, and now our taper is more important than ever because the actual body of this fly is made of thread. So I'm going to take my wire. I'm happy with the taper that I have now. Take my wire and add some nice wraps with this to create a nice segment on my body. And I'm going to finish that off right up here. Tie some wraps in to trap that. Okay, so now our most of our body is pretty much done. Um, this fly does have a small flashback uh, that you can, I like to tie mine in kind of this opal color, just like that. Uh, you try to just your classic flashback color. So I'm going to take a little bit of this. And it's important to tie this. I mean, it, it it's important for your personal aesthetic of the fly, not to catch fish. Um, to tie this right on top of the fly. And I like to add a little, have a little bit of space so that I can actually have a pretty pronounced thorax and that flash of that wrap. We're going to take um, a little bit of this ice dub in golden brown. Um, you can tie this, since this is a blue wing specifically, I could tie this with you know a small olive or some something a little bit darker than this. But I really like this contrast of colors. And again, these being suggestive patterns, I think having a little bit of brown in this will actually have fish key in, keyed in on PMDs eat this fly as well which I think is a big part of tying Euro nymphs, in my opinion, which is just to have flies that will catch fish, even if it's not specifically what they're feeding on. So I could fish this right here when blue wings are popping or when PMDs are popping. And since I have both of those nice colors in this, the fish will take it. I'm gonna fold that up and over, just like that. You can see there, just tied in right on top. Okay, I'm gonna fold this back. One more wrap behind it, and one more in front of it. Now I know that that's nice and seated in there. I'm gonna snip that right off. And then again, we're gonna add a small little bat bit of this uh, fluorescent orange dub. And again, this is gonna even require less because it's such a tiny fly. Um, so we're just gonna tie in a teeny bit, basically enough to get one to two wraps at the head of this. Just like that. Perfect. I'm going to pull this back to kind of clean this up a bit. And then I'm going to whip finish. And we are done with that pattern now. Just like that. And you'll see me kind of, when I do my whip finish, you'll see me kind of push my thread up a tiny bit. Um, and what I'm doing is it's actually pushing that thread into a nice little cavity and it's kind of sinking, cinching down a little bit lower. And that's just why I'm doing that. And in my opinion, it makes your wraps a little less vulnerable. But still, we're going to add a little dab of glue. And now we're done. Um, and those are the three flies that I fish literally everywhere. Um, this little guy, I'll usually run on point, And then I'll have my heavier fly as my bottom fly. Um, since this fly has a smaller bead, this would usually be my point fly. So it's just sitting a little higher in the water column. But um, yeah, and then right here we got... Our small sow bug, right there you'll see it's a not notably larger. And then we got our small little caddis pattern right there. So 
those are the bugs that I fish more than anything, and those are the bugs that have given me the greatest success. Um, if you guys like this video, make sure to like and subscribe, leave a comment, share the video, do whatever you want to do. Um, again, I appreciate every single one of you, and I will see you guys this next week because we're going to be back in on the fishing vlog. So stay tuned, and we have some fun stuff to look forward to. Later, guys.